Let's explore probability density functions a little bit further. And here I have drawn one for the random variable, let's call this random variable g, just for a little bit of variety here. So g is a continuous random, var random variable, and here is its probability density function. And I like this one because this is non-uniform. Now the first question I have for you, assuming that it continues to be a zero probability as we go greater than five, and a zero probability as we are less than one, is what does this height have to be in order for this to be a legitimate probability density function for g, for this random variable? Well, all of the possible outcomes are between one and five, including one and five. And so the combined probability of all of these outcomes has to be equal to one. And so this area right underneath this curve, the area right underneath this curve needs to be equal to one. Well, that area is going to be whatever this height is, whatever this height is, let's call that h, Whatever that height is times the base times 1 half is going to be equal to 1. So what's that height going to be? Let's see. 1 half times the base. So the base is 4 wide. It goes between 1 and 5. So it's 4 wide. So 1 half times 4 times the height has to be equal to 1. And I can only do this because it's a pretty straightforward geometric figure. If this was some type of a curve, I would have to break out a little bit of the calculus. But anyway, let's work with this one. So 1 half times 4 is 2. 2 times h is equal to 1. h divide both sides by 2. h is going to be equal to 1 half. So, so this height right over here, this height right over here is going to be equal to 1 half. And now we've constructed a legitimate probability distribution for our random variable g. Now given this non-continuous probability density function here, so once again, let me make it clear. This is the PDF, probability density function. And we could actually describe this analytically if you want to figure out the equations for these lines. You could say it's equal to, it's equal to this line. The density function is equal to this line between 1 and 3. It's equal to this line between 3 and, four, three and 5. It's 0 above 5, 0 below 1. We could figure that out. And it's actually a fun thing to do if you're, if you're in the mood. But let's think about some probabilities here. What is the probability that our random variable g is greater than or equal to 2 and less than or equal to 3. What's that probability going to be? Well, once again, we're talking about the range. It can be 2. It can be anywhere between 2 and 3, including 2 and 3. So we're essentially talking about the area under the curve between 2 and 3. So we're talking about we're talking about this area right over here, which is a trapezoid. So the one way I think about the area of a trapezoid, you, and especially when it's oriented this way, it's the mean of the two heights, the two different heights, times the base. So this, the base here is 1. The base here is 1. And then the, two, the mean of the two heights, so it's going to be plus, or I should say times, 1 half times this height on the left-hand side, and what's this going to be? We're uniformly over two spaces, over two spaces we are going up one half. So over one space, we're just going to go up one fourth. So this right over here is going to be one fourth. So this height right over here is going to be one fourth. And then in and then this height over here, we already figured it out. This, the density at g for g equals 3 is at the density there is 1 half. So 1 fourth plus 1 half. And so this part of the expression gives us our mean density over this range. And it's linear, so it works out well for us. If this was a curve, once again, we'd have to break out the calculus. But we're really just taking the area of this trapezoid. This, this base is 1. This base is 1. And then we're multiplying it times the mean height of the trapezoid. So this is going to be this is going to be equal to, well, 1 times anything is anything. It's going to be 1 half times 1 fourth plus 1 half. Well, one four, that's 1 fourth plus 2 fourths, which is 3 fourths, which is equal to 3 over 8. So the probability that g, for this non-uniform distribution, that g is between 2 and 3 is equal to 3 eighths. Now, let me ask you another question. And this is related to what we saw in the last video, but just a little bit of practice. 
what is the probability that g is going to be equal to exactly, exactly three? What is this probability? Well, here we're dealing with the area. Remember, this is a density function. So this is a, it tells you how dense the probability is at that point. But if we're really talking about an infinitely, infinitely thin rectangle here, which we are, we're talking about being precisely three, not 2.99999, not 3.0001, not anything in between. We have to, or the only thing in between that would satisfy it is when we are exactly three. And we see here, that when you have a height of one half, but the base of your rectangle has, you have no width, you have no base. So you have a rectangle with no width, has zero area. So once again, this probability, this probability is going to be equal to zero. Which, I will, which leads to another interesting question. Here we saw that the probability that g is between two and three, including two and three, was equal to three eighths. What is going to be the probability what is going to be the probability if I were to say g is between two and three, oh, let me write it this way, g is between two and three, but it won't be, it, but we're not talking about the situations when it is exactly equal to two or exactly equal to three. But it could be anything in between. Any number, it could be 2.000001 or 2.9999999. We're just not talking about the scenario where it's exactly three or the scenario where it's exactly two. What is this probability going to be, where these are strictly less than signs, not less than or equal? Well, it's still actually going to be equal to 3 eighths. The one way you could think about it, this is still going to be the area of the same trapezoid. We've subtracted out these infinitely thin rectangles at each boundary, which each have zero area. If you take something, if you take two zero areas away from an area, you still have an area of three eighths. It's a little philosophically interesting, a little something for you to think about.